1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. This evening, with the Lord's help, it will become evident that there is clarity through charity. Conversely, there uh, is obscurity and immaturity. In 1 Corinthians, Paul writes to a young Christian church and identifies that many of their failures, of course some of their failures were just outright sin, which, which Paul called out, but some of their failures were a result of a lack of understanding or a lack of empathy. You know, he, he acknowledged uh, some of their church dissidents, some of their some of their legal matters going to the law instead of to their brother. He talked about some of their cultural situations, meat offered to idols, uh, things of that nature, and 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 expressed that there's some some nuance to those things, and that grace and love were were needed. Uh, Paul presents uh, the the love of God demonstrated in Jesus Christ as the solution. To Paul, there is maturity in charity. And there are humble, there is a humble quality uh, intrinsic to the spirit of love. Perhaps some of you remember, but in our in our Sunday school class here in this wing, several years ago we had a eight-foot creature that was taped to the wall. His name was Igor, and we actually created him during one of our lessons where we were studying Corinthians uh, 12, chapter 12, and we prompted the class uh, to draw out, to cut uh, a body uh, part, like a member, an appendage of, of the body, right? And it was random. We didn't say, okay, you cut out arms, you cut out legs, you cut out a head, you cut out a mouth. It was just, we just said, okay, you know, Think of a, of, a, of a body part, and there's some risk involved in that, but cut it out, and, and we will create this, this, this image, this creature, right? And he was eight feet tall, and Igor was a cyclop. He had one eye, but he had two legs, and they were of completely different shapes and sizes. I believe that he had three arms and four hands. I think he had two mouths and two noses. Igor was hideous. Nevertheless, as he took shape, uh, we configured his, his members, and there was a certain beauty to him. All of his parts came together, and, uh, you know, individually it was a little bit chaotic and didn't make a lot of sense, but as he, as he took shape, he became something, right? And in, in Paul's letter to the Corinthians, uh, he's, he's expressing that. He starts out, you know, this beautiful chapter of love in chapter 13 actually begins, you know, chapters prior. But uh, in chapter 12, he writes to them regarding their spiritual gifts. And he says... That in, in verse 7, he says, Every man uh, is given a gift from God, a gift of God's love. He says that uh, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man, to every woman, to every child, to profit the group, to profit everyone. He says that some uh, of those gifts he identifies as, as wisdom. Some have the gift of knowledge, some have the gift of faith, some have the gift of healing, the gift of miracles, some have the gift of prophecy, some have the gift of discernment, some have the gift of tongues, other the gift of interpretation. So he says that that the body of Christ is, is many members, 
according to the gifts of the Spirit. And every person is given at least one gift. And he goes on to say that that the members of the the body are are fitted together. They're fused uh, together. And they all serve a purpose. Some may seem more important than others, but he says that that even uh, the more feeble are necessary. So every part uh, is important. He says uh, in verse 23 that our uncomely parts or our unpresentable parts have uh, more abundant and comeliness when they are tempered together, right? There's more beauty when we come together in, 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 as a church, as a body of believers, as the bride of Christ. There is beauty. We might look a little bit like Igor, uh, a bit disfigured, a bit unwieldy, a bit unorthodox, but there's a, a certain beauty about that. We all come from different backgrounds and, and, and different uh, childhoods and, and different events that have shaped who we are. We have very strong biases and beliefs. And yet here we are tonight, all in the same place, of the same mind, of a certain unity. And there's beauty in that. Oh, these are the gifts from heaven. These are divine gifts. And he goes on to say that uh, when one member suffers, verse 26, that all members suffer. And when one member is honored, then all rejoice with it. He goes on to say in verse 28 that no man has all of the gifts. So everybody has at least one gift. You may say, well, man, I don't, I don't feel like I have a lot going for me tonight. According to Paul and the Lord through Paul, everybody is, is, is given at least one spiritual gift. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But no one is given all of the spiritual gifts. It says that first there are some apostles, there are some prophets, there are some teachers, miracle workers, healers, helpers, uh, people with diversity of tongues and, and governments, such as like organization and stuff, I suppose. Uh, but no one is given all of those gifts, and then one person gets no gifts, right? That's not cool. So the Lord gives his gifts uh, accordingly. But then Paul says something interesting. He says, but I show you the more excellent way, or I'm going to introduce to you another gift, the gift of charity, the gift of love, and this gift is given to all of you. And this is exemplified in the person of Jesus Christ. He goes on to say at the beginning of, of thirteen, chapter 13, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of the angels and have not charity, I become as sounding brass or tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all uh, mysteries and have all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. So Paul is saying, the Lord gives these heavenly gifts, these these spiritual gifts, but without love, without charity, they're just a bunch of noise. It's just a bunch of noise. And he goes on to say uh, all of these beautiful things about the characteristics of godly love, many of which uh, we heard about this morning. And uh, it, it's a beautiful portion of Scripture. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long, is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own is not easily provoked. Charity thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Charity beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all 
all things. Charity never fails. Where there be prophecies, they shall fail. Where there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy, prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. All of these spiritual gifts, what a blessing they are. But they will all pass away. They will all fade away. In my, in my Bible, I have, uh, you know, we, we, we say, and it's according to the scripture, that God is love. And Jesus here demonstrates godly love. And in my Bible, in this column, I have the name Jesus by every verse. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Because Jesus exemplifies God's love toward us. All of these other things will pass away. And the point that I want to make tonight is that there is clarity in charity. And it's easy to be distracted by all of the other spiritual gifts, even if it's well-intentioned. Sometimes the spiritual gifts become more about uh, the, the person exhibiting the gift than it does about God and God's love and His charity. And I think that that is an immature love. And I think that oftentimes as we go through life, it's, it's easy uh, for, for things to be obscured uh, by, by what's not important. I mean, our spiritual gifts are important, but they're not so important when, when they become our focus. It becomes a distraction at that point. God's love never fails. Everything else will vanish and pass away. But our Lord's love endures. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. When that which is perfect is come, then that which is in, in part shall be done away. When our Lord and Savior, who is perfect, returns for His bride, then that which is in part shall be done away and we shall know him and see him clearer when i was a child i spake as a child i've spent a lot of time around children and sometimes they can be hard to understand i understood uh, as a child i thought as a child Children know a mother's love. They know a father's love. They know the security that a mother and a father provides, the nurturing, uh, the, the sustenance, the provision that a mother uh, can provide, the comfort. And that is love at its, most, at its most basic form. But it's also a means of survival. The child has not developed that love. Yet, it doesn't know how, a child does not know how to reciprocate the love that, that, is, that is demonstrated toward the child from a mo mother or a father. A child cries because he is hungry, or her diaper is soiled, or uh, she is tired. And so the child cries. And that is a, is, a, is a call for attention, a call for help. And a loving mother and a loving father will go out of their way, just like our Lord does, to serve that child, to serve that baby. But at some point, the child must grow, and the child must develop, and the, the child must learn to reciprocate that love. Not a, a selfish love, but, but a giving love. And so as we develop, as Christians, I think, I think the point that Paul is trying to get to the church in Corinth and the church to us tonight is that we must develop and we must grow. And we must mature in our love. 
Because if we fail to do that, uh, our, our perspective on, on the world is, is, becomes obscure. And, and as, we, as we grow and, and develop and we try to find our calling in this life, maybe we, we, we come to understand maybe a spiritual gifting. And we, and we start to uh, indulge in that and, and, and look at that. And, and we say, okay, I, I think that there's something here. But without any growth and any development and any charity and any love, that gift serves no purpose. The gift is wasted. Oh, heaven, help us that we would grow and we would develop from a spiritual child to a, a mature adult that can, that, can, uh, that can love the Lord. Uh, just as the Lord loved us, that, that I shall be known. Here we go in verse 12 and, and uh, 13. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Oh, that I could reciprocate the love of God, that I could show Him how much I appreciate uh, His grace, His mercy, that He saved me. Not that I just continue to cry out like a babe, needing milk or needing a nap. No, but that, that I would show him that I love him. That I could demonstrate that to him. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity. These three. Faith and hope. Those are spiritual gifts. They're beautiful gifts. But there is a gift that supersedes all other gifts. And that is the gift of Jesus Christ. The gift of love. The gift of charity. Now abideth faith, hope, charity. These three. But the greatest of these is charity. God's love never fails. It endures to the end. Everything else will pass away, but God's love will remain. Oh, we pray tonight that our vision isn't obscured by those things that we don't fully understand or fully see, but that we would recognize His love through Jesus Christ. 157 is the song Altars are open for prayer.